my name is Rachel and today I'm bringing you recommendations of books with green covers to help you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So this list is in no particular order. They're just books I've read that I think that you might enjoy that have green covers or at least some amount of green on the cover. So first up is A is for Alibi. This is the first book in what I refer to as the Alphabet series, uh, but is actually called the Kenzie Malone series by Sue Grafton. This is a mystery series that goes from uh, A to Y, all the letters of the alphabet except for Z, because Sue Grafton sadly passed away before Z was published. And these are just really kind of fun little mysteries. Uh, Kenzie, our main character, is a private detective. I believe she used to be I don't remember if she was a detective or just a police officer, but she used to work uh, for the police. So I wouldn't consider this quite a cozy, but it kind of feels like that. She rents a room from this older man named Henry who is just adorable. And, you know, they really kind of strike up a bond over the series. And it's just a lot of fun. There's a mystery every single book that you're solving. And through every book, you get to know some of the main characters a little bit more. And it's a lot of fun. Next is The Adoration of Jenna Fox. I haven't read this in a while, but I remember thinking this was a very interesting concept for a book. Essentially, our main character, Jenna, um, wakes up and realizes she's been in a terrible car accident. And through the book, she realizes the full extent of what has been done to and for her to bring her back and keep her alive. So it's it's fascinating. Um, it's interesting to see how she comes to this knowledge and how she begins to deal with it and how she interacts with people from her life before the accident. And this is a trilogy. I've read book one and two, but I never read book three. So I need to fix that. But this would be a good pick. Also matched by Ali Condi. I would say this one's kind of like a mixed bag here on, on booktube. A lot of people like it. A lot of people didn't like it. I did not like the sequel to this, so I didn't finish the trilogy, but I enjoyed this first book. I thought it was an interesting premise. Um, it's like a lot of the dystopians that were coming out at that time. We have a main character who lives in a world where a lot of choices are being made for her, and they are matching people. Essentially, they don't let you pick your own people. They decide who is deserving of a spouse or a, a partner and then they match you up based on how compatible they think you'll be and how beneficial your pairing would be for the community, especially if you have children. Um, so it's very odd. It's very kind of terrifying idea of what that would look like. And there, of course, is a little snafu when it comes to our main character because, of course, she's the one uh, who it doesn't work for. So I kind of like this first one, even though it was really cheesy, but I did not necessarily enjoy the second one. So good thing the first one is the green cover. The next one is just basically like a book of quotes kind of like each page has like a thought on it it's not like a novel or even like a non-fiction book well technically it's non-fiction but every page just has like a little quote or thought on it and it's called things you can see only when you slow down I really enjoy this I thought it was kind of fun this is not something I would recommend like sitting down and just reading all in one but maybe just kind of browsing some you can pick it up and get into it and read a few and then put it back down and then just dip back in whenever you want so this would be a really good book to passively read this month if you're interested. Another one that I would recommend is One Was Lost. This is by Natalie Richardson and uh, I really like this author and this book was so much fun to read with my book club. Um, it's a scary YA book which is in high demand. If you know any teens they love to read scary things and essentially we have seniors who are required to complete some sort of task and we have a group that haven't managed to do their task yet, so they're kind of forced into this camping situation. And immediately, of course, they get separated and they all are losing their chaperones in various ways. So they're on the run in the middle of the woods being chased by someone or something who doesn't really want them to leave. It was a lot of fun to read for our book club. It is a very popular book in our library, and uh, I would highly recommend this book. And the author is just as sweet as she can be. Next is the second book in the World of Lore series. This is basically a um, physical version of the Aaron Mankey podcast called Lore. And if you listen, you probably will have, you probably know most of these anyway. But to be perfectly honest, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or not, but I don't necessarily like Aaron Mankey's 
production of the podcast. I actually much prefer to read them. I think uh, between uh, his writing and his crew's research, I think they produce very interesting content, but I would much rather read it myself than hear him. So I much prefer the book versions. Um, and the second one is all focused on people. Um, the first one was monsters. The third one was haunted places. But the second one, the green one, is all about like creepy, scary, haunted people. Uh, there's a lot about serial killers and murderers and what people have done through the ages and witches and things like that. And it's just a lot of fun. If you like kind of creepy history stuff, this will be perfect for you. Next up is Hand on the Wall. Now, I debated about this one because this is this is kind of in the middle of a series. You'd have to read more to get to this one. Um, the last one technically was the second book, but you don't have to have read the first book for it to make sense. You can read those out of order completely. Uh, it was just the second one that's published. This one, I believe, is the third book, and you really won't, it won't make any sense if you haven't read the other two. So basically, I'm recommending you a whole series so that you can get to the green one. Uh, this is by Maureen Johnson. It's the Truly Devious series, and I really enjoy Enjoy this. I kind of marathon the three books in the original series uh, because it was a lot of fun and they really the, the first three really go together. There's a big overarching mystery that spans all three books um, and there's another one that spans the first two books. So the very first book is called uh, Truly Devious. The second one is The Vanishing Stare and then the third one, the green one, is The Hand on the Wall. So I would highly recommend this series especially if you've already read Truly Devious. Definitely plow through and get to that green one for St. Patrick's Day. Next up is one I just read recently and that is Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marina Garcia. This was a very creepy gothic story. It's set in Mexico and we have our main character who is um, basically asked by her father to go check on her cousin. Her cousin has recently got married and moved in with her spouse, her new spouse, and things don't seem to be going well based on her communication. So he sends his daughter, our main character, to go check on her. And as soon as she gets there, she realizes the house is creepy. It's all kinds of creepy and the people are kind of creepy and the longer she stays there the creepier everything gets and it was very interesting. I don't think this one was a hundred percent for me but I did enjoy it. I really liked um, a lot of the like creepier elements in this so if you are interested at all this would be perfect to pick up this month with the green cover. Next up is another one that would be really great and that's uh, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I really still don't understand that title but the cover is gorgeous. Um, this is a scary adult book that is set in basically like kind of a haunted house. Well what we think might be a haunted house because um, it's got a little bit of like an Amityville horror situation going on. Our main character um, lived there when she was young with her mom and dad. Her parents originally claimed the house was haunted and her dad went on to write a story uh, about their time at this creepy house. Very Amityville horror like. Um, so it's up for debate of whether this house is actually haunted or not. Um, and I really like this because we're experiencing our main character going back to the house for the first time in a long time. I believe her dad is I believe her dad has passed away, so she inherits the house. She didn't know he hang, he hung on to it all these years later. Um, but she inherits the house. She goes back. She's going to fix it up, and then she's going to sell it because she doesn't really want anything to do with this house. Um, but we're following her as she goes back to the house for the first time in, like, 30 years. And every other chapter, then, is a similar scenario from the father's book, like them moving into the house for the first time. So it's a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed this one, and it definitely has green on the cover. Next up is The Inheritance Games. I think this would be a really fun one uh, to read this month. I think this is perfect for St. Patrick's Day covers because it's basically green and gold. Um, and this follows a main character who is made aware that she has been uh, declared an heir for this very, very wealthy estate. And she, is, she doesn't know how she's connected to this family at all. But uh, the requirement for her to get all of this money is to move in and live with the family that just got disinherited. So that sounds like a great setup for a book, right? Um, so this book is going to have three books in the series. The second one's already out and the third one comes out, I believe, in October. So now would be a perfect time to jump into the series if you haven't. And this one won our state uh 
Children's Choice Award for the teen category this year. This was our Buckeye Book Award winner. Next is Don't Turn Out the Lights. This was fantastic. This is a collection of short stories, all written in honor of Alan Swartz, which is the author of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. So they're all very much in that kind of style, but this is a lot more diverse of a collection. So that's really enjoyable. And this is that creepy neon green on the cover. So if you like scary stories, definitely check these out. Next up is Gory Details. This one is mostly black with green lettering, but I just couldn't resist recommending this one. It is fantastic. Now, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's Gory Details. So if you have um, a queasy stomach, you might want to steer clear of this one, but it was so fascinating. In this book, we go with our author exploring the world of gory things. This is basically a collection of essays of her traveling around and discovering different things. So one chapter, one essay is all about how we should be eating bugs to make our world more sustainable. Another one is about these little nutshell murder houses that were made and the police still use them this, to this day to discuss uh, crime scene techniques and training etc. Um, there's one about why pets eat their owners after the owners die. So it gets really gory so just be prepared but it was so fascinating. I really, really enjoyed this book and I think I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. So as long as you have a strong stomach, definitely pick this one up. Another one I wasn't sure I was going to like because I did not think I would be smart enough to read it was Women and Other Monsters. This is another essay collection where we're looking at how women are portrayed in mythologies as the villains a lot of times. Like the prime example is Medusa. And even if they're not vilified, they are portrayed in a negative light. So I thought this was a very interesting and feminist view of um, looking back at mythology and why these things are written this way and how it still is affecting our culture today. It was very, very interesting. Next up is Pride and Premeditation by Tears of Price. Uh, this was one of my favorite books last year. I absolutely loved this book. This is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. The thing that I think I like the most about this one is that it's set in the same time frame. So it maintains a lot of the things necessary to keep the Pride and Prejudice story storyline fairly accurate. Um, it's again set in the same storyline and we have all the same characters but instead of the plot of Pride and Prejudice we are following a murder mystery plot that brings all these characters together and it was so much fun. This is probably my very favorite retelling of Pride and Prejudice. So definitely check this one out. She is going to have a sequel coming out very soon. I believe even next month called Sense and Second Degree Murder, which I'm sure you've already guessed is going to be a retelling of Sense and Sensibility. And last but not least is, the, is another book that's the third in the series. So I, I don't know how you're going to feel about that. But this series would be really, really easy to catch up with. They're middle grade books, very short, very fast books. Uh, this one's called Dark Waters. It's the third book in the Small Spaces series by Katherine Arden. And these are fantastic. The fourth and final book will be coming out, I believe, in August. And I absolutely cannot wait. But this is the one with the green cover. And this is in the spring setting. All of these books take place in a season. So the first book, Small Spaces, takes place in fall. Then we have Dead Voices that takes place in the winter and now now Dark Waters that takes place in the spring and this one left on a huge cliffhanger. So I would highly suggest that you catch up with all three of these books so you're ready for the fourth and final release in August. So there you have some of my green cover recommendations for you to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. If you have any books that have green covers that you would like to recommend, leave them down below. Let's talk books. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in another video soon. Bye for now.